Hello everybody, welcome to Wake Up and Smell the Tauntaun, another local Star Wars show starring your host, yours truly, John Maffio. Last week, I just got the ball rolling on this show again because it's been a couple months, and as soon as I put the show out, more news comes out. One of the biggest news stories we've had in a while. Ian McGregor, it's been, it's been flip-flopping back and forth, but apparently I saw Deadline posted it, so when I see something on Deadline... Usually it means that it's happening. Ewan McGregor has signed on, evidently, for a Disney Plus show. We don't know when, we don't know how, we don't know what's going on, details. Probably going to find out at D23 next week. But yeah, it seems like it's confirmed now that he's going to be involved. And it's going to be Disney Plus, which is perfect. I, If we're not going to get a movie, I think it's better off being a 6 to 8 episode limited run. Where... We have that in-between Revenge of the Sith and New Hope of him on Tatooine. Maybe he goes off and does things. We can get all speculative and make theories from here on out. But I'm excited to have the confirmation that he's actually on board. Because people, the prequels have their problems, but they've had, as they call them prequelists, have come back around talking about how much they love the prequels. I have a friend, a local friend, uh, he used to be really close with, who has always really been unapologetically loving of the Phantom Menace and a lot of the prequels, uh, even like parts of Attack of the Clones. Uh, I've always liked a lot Revenge of the Sith, but it's cool to see people who have grown up with the prequels, like myself, really embracing it. It's almost unanimous, I would say, that I never heard one person ever say that Ian McGregor was bad in his portrayal of a younger Obi-Wan Kenobi, Ben Kenobi. Oh, hello there. Hello there. The fact that we're going to get a whole series with him is pretty damn cool. And I I don't have any real interest in the Cassian Endor show that they're apparently developing. I'm super stoked for The Mandalorian because of who's involved with that show. This show I will be on board for from the get-go, just from concept alone. What they end up doing with his character and what they end up doing, canonically speaking, we'll have to see. Is he gonna stay on Tatooine? Is he gonna go off and travel? Is he gonna is there gonna be a younger version of Luke Skywalker who will be casted in this role? Are we ever gonna see Luke? Are we ever gonna see Uncle Owen or um Aunt Beru? Are we gonna see anybody we re- well, I'm sure we're gonna see some people we recognize. I'm sure we're gonna go to Mos Eisley Cantina at least once in this show. Um if you really wanna get your money's worth in promotional material and getting people to sign up for Disney Plus, you get Darth Vader in there somehow. Uh, you get you get the the empire in there. There's a lot you could really do. I don't think they're gonna keep it on Tatooine. I think personally, I think it would be a more grounded approach and a more interesting approach to keep it on Tatooine. But I wouldn't blame the um, the storytellers and everybody who who develops the show if they want to go beyond Tatooine and take Obi Wan off the planet somehow. Uh, we'll have to see, but just the sheer fact alone that we got Ewan McGregor back in this role is great. Um, not, not that anything should be validated, but in an interesting way, it further validates the prequels and that we're not forgetting about them. It validates the existence of them. Everything matters. So it's cool that everything does kind of fall together into a pot. Ideas have been thrown around that we might get some force visions of Qui-Gon Jinn since he learned how to be a force ghost. Uh, We learned at the end of Revenge of the Sith that Yoda basically taught Obi-Wan the ways of immortality through the ways of his old friend, his old master, um, Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon Jinn. So maybe we'll get Liam Neeson in there. He looks the same age that he did 15, 20 years ago. So I I think they could definitely do that. Um... Otherwise, you can just pull his face back a little bit, get those wrinkles out. <laughs> it's all fair game right now. To see what happens, whether a lot of people sign up for it, a lot of people stay on it. Is Netflix going to fail more? Are they going to lose a lot of subscribers? What's going to happen with this whole streaming service situation? But a show like this will earn its subscribers and earn its attention if it's done right with incredible people. And you got Ewan already. You just put Ewan McGregor on a poster for Disney Plus, and boom. You probably got a lot of people on board. So looking forward to that. So moving into that, we're probably going to most likely get a confirmation on this at D23 next week with 
Ewan McGregor present on stage. I, I definitely see it. It seems like it's no coincidence. It's been said in a lot of other places, but it seems like it's no coincidence that a lot of these Star Wars um, rumors and stories are coming out right now, right before the convention. So I'm sure at the convention they're going to announce a lot of things officially. Maybe we'll get some more information on some movies, the Ryan Johnson trilogy, maybe a basic story concept, or the Benioff and Weiss trilogy um, that they're producing um, the Mandalorian show, maybe we'll actually get a trailer online. We still don't have an online public trailer for Mandalorian. It was streamed for people who were in the room at the Winterest Arena at, at, um, Star Wars Celebration. A trailer did come out, a leak trail, and I did lock, I did take a look at it, and it looked really cool. It looked incredible. So to have a HD official release of a trailer for Mandalorian would be nice. Uh, maybe we'll get more information on the casting Endor show. Uh, maybe show more promotional material for Rise of Skywalker. Maybe they will release the final trailer here and then release it out in public a week later or whatever. Um, probably they're all gonna, probably going to show a lot of Marvel stuff, but since this is the Star Wars show relating to Star Wars stuff, I think we definitely, if I had to really put emphasis on what I think we're definitely going to see, definitely going to get Mandalorian stuff, and I think we're definitely going to get that trailer. For everybody to watch. Um, the one that they released at Star Wars Celebration. Is going to go online. Officially. I think we get Ian McGregor. Coming out and they announced. Officially announced the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. I think we get a little bit about Cassian Endor show. And maybe something completely new. And then also of course. The Rise of Skywalker. It's coming out in December. They're going to do something. They're going to mention it at least. And, and But I, the new trailer. I'm 50-50 about. I think if we don't get it here. We're going to get it during football in September or October. It's a weird time for Star Wars where there's a lot more emphasis on the streaming service. So that's why I'm not really talking about the movies right now because we're not going to get a lot of movie news, I think, for a while. I don't think there's that's, there's no focus there right now. The, 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 the development is happening, but it's happening under wraps in, in secret meetings at Lucasfilm, Skywalker Ranch, Maybe George Lucas is in the room for some of these. I know George Lucas has been more involved with things like The Mandalorian. He was on set for it, as far as we know. Um, but I don't see... No, nothing about... Uh, Rise of Skywalker, I think, is going to be the last episodic movie for a while. I think they're gonna, there's going to be more, emph- they have more emphasis on the shows and the spin-off trilogies with Benioff and Weiss and Ryan Johnson. But obviously, we're getting the Benioff and Weiss thing first. I don't think we find out what the story is with those yet, though. I don't think we're going to find out what this trilogy is going to be. It's an understatement to say that <laughs> Game of Thrones wasn't uh, it wasn't well received this last season for a lot of different reasons. People were disappointed for a lot of various reasons. Uh, I enjoyed the last season. The, the, you could definitely tell that the quality of the writing um, fell off and decreased, but I still enjoy the journey getting to the end. Um, I'm I'm not picky though. I don't get picky about things like Game of Thrones. The, the whole show was incredible, and the last couple seasons got more mainstream blockbustery. What they were able to do there, I think it shows potential for what can be a new trilogy with new characters we don't know. If it's Old Republic, they could pull and cherry pick from whatever, from the games and all the canon, and do whatever they want, and I'm looking forward to seeing whatever they do. I'm not going to be a little party pooper. Don't be a party pooper. I'm, I'm not going to be a Debbie Downer because of what happened with Game of Thrones. I'm still excited for what they're going to bring to the table. And they're producing it. They can get some great directors on board and do tell some really incredible stories and really give a new face for a new generation. For kids who are going to be growing up, kids already have been growing up with this new trilogy episode 7, 8, and 9. But there's going to be kids who are born like now in the next couple of years that are going to grow up with these spin-off trilogies, the Ryan Johnsons and the Benioff and Weisses. So, I, I just made Weiss plural. At the end of the day, there's a Star Wars for everybody, and I'm just looking forward to seeing what they bring to the table. Because, I, from my perspective, I know from business perspective, I know from a business perspective, it gets, it's very different. People see things differently. But, I think we've had our fair share of the Skywalkers and a fair share of characters that we recognize. I'm, I think we need new bold directions with characters that we don't know, new characters, completely new characters, make new personalities, just tell new stories. Because if they connect, that's all you need to do is connect to the audience with these characters, and boom, 
And having said that, that's the end of today's episode. Let me know down below what do you think about the Ewan McGregor news. Are you excited for this show? Uh, and D23, um, I didn't really go into it, but it's like a Disney convention. They do it every year now, and they announce like projects that they're doing with Marvel, with Star Wars, the Disney parks, all that. So down below, they, I think they're doing a stream, a live stream of it too, in a way. But if even if they're not, what do you think they're going to announce? Uh, down below, comment down below. What do you think is going to happen? Are they going to talk more about the streaming services? Are they going to mention anything about the movies? What do you think? Uh, thank you for watching this week's episode of Wake Up a Smell the Tauntaun. I am John Maffio, of course. Please like, subscribe, comment down below, engage in conversation, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. May the force be with you always. I it's sleep. I need some sleep. But when you see this, it's going to be bright and early. Wait, Harrison Ford impression, Han Solo impression coming in three, two. One, I thought they smelled bad on the outside. That was so bad. Never again. <laughs> See you guys next time.